all right and yes this is my face it's always a bit difficult <laughs> to see my own face like this i never get used to it but hello everybody welcome back to another title tuesday my name is roland prijsers that's the dutch pronunciation if you want to know the english pronunciation it's just roland it's absolutely fine to call me like that and yeah so we have another title tuesday going on and of course we are starting uh for the europeans one hour earlier and that yeah so hopefully the europeans don't get confused by the time at the moment uh the difference is because in the us uh the winter time has not settled yet so that's why we are one hour earlier for the europeans but it doesn't matter because we still got a lot of people who are uh who knew this actually and let me show you guys what is going on for today. So it's another title Tuesday and it's not part of the speed chess or anything. It is part of, it's just a single tournament. So here you go. This is the layout that we're going to take a look at. So a lot of good players, as you can see below me, below my uh, camera. And this is the format that we are going to rock today so the format is 11 rounds swiss and the schedule is every tuesday at 10 a.m pdt or 19 cest so only this week that is at 18 cest but uh yeah i mean uh, the europeans are very much awake so it's all good and three minutes uh with one second increment which is very interesting always Last week uh, we saw a lot of time scrambles and it was uh, very interesting to watch. And yeah, even some very nice blunders. And yeah, the tie breaks are of course on payout. In this case, there is no qualification or anything like uh, last for the speed chess qualification. So it's just a payout based on chess.com tie breaks. And then you're asking what kind of payout is there? Well, here you go. It is the first place is $750, second place 400, third place 150, fourth place 100, and the best female and best stream also get $100. So yeah, this is what they are going to play for. And last week was very clutch with Hikaru beating Artemiev or Mr. Sip Elephant in the last round to, to win the final uh in the final round to win the the tournament so yeah I'm hoping of course that we're going to see the same amount of action I do not see Hikaru on the on the participation list but Artemiev is here to maybe grab the first place uh this week because Artemiev is actually Mr. Sip Elephant. He is now on place two. Yeah, so let me update it, everyone. And actually, we already got a winner. If you take a look at the standings below me, then Ava Chess has already won her game somehow. I wonder how that happened, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it can happen. So let's get right into the games. Hope you guys are doing all good. And let's, of course, start with the number one seed, Mr. Artemiev. So Artemiev is called Sip Elephant. I have no idea why. There must be a good story behind that. So keep an eye on the chat because we have some regular viewers who know this kind of stuff. So you can ask anybody there and you might get the answer real soon. So what's going on here? It's an English opening from White. White has got... Um, yeah, knight on d5, but white's got a knight, uh, but black's got a knight on d4. So, so far, very complicated. Uh, white pushed the pawn to c4, probably at the start. Yep, it was move one. And to support the d5 knight, but the big difference here is that black still has c6 as an option. So that's the difference, and it is played. So basically, black has a good knight on d4, which also is going to get taken off. But white is also losing the good knight on d5. <clears throat> yeah, so I just had some cornmeal tea and it was very nice. But apparently I drank it a little bit too fast or something. So, yeah, 
hopefully it will be all good. Okay, so let's keep this going. Uh, interesting opening. Uh, they are still, of course, yet to um, get into the action, but we might check that out later. Let me check on to Lion Beast. Which is, of course, Mr. Maxime Vachelegroff, who doesn't know the Frenchman. And he seems to be doing all right. So he's got a nice space advantage like this. And he's got some pressure over the F file. Black is attacking the C4 pawn. But I think, yeah, Queen E2 looks normal. Or maybe even a move like Bishop F1 should be fine. All right. So this looks very promising for Maxime Bouchet Lagrave. So yeah, for you not regular viewers, uh, Title Tuesday is only for title players. And that with that, I don't mean a doctor or a PhD. Um, I mean uh, title players in chess. So you have to be a grandmaster, a feeder master, a uh, national master is also even okay. And then you can join this tournament. Uh, yeah, all right, so this is looking very, very good for white. White is simply going to attack, probably g5 on the next move, maybe even take, or just bishop h3. Why not? White has got total domination, black has no counterplay on the queen side, so doing very well for Lion Beast with the white pieces against Ilves 21 from the United States. So yeah, g5, and black is going to get a lot of pressure. Right, moving on. Um, yeah, let's just move on to board three. Why not? So board three is Mr. Fedoseev uh, with the black pieces. Called himself Big Fish. There's a movie like that, I believe. It was very well received. Um, pretty old though, but you can still watch it. And yeah, it's doing all right. So rook d3. Uh, black is simply a pawn up, it seems. Yeah. Two pawns over here, and white's got a one extra pawn on the king side. But black's got all the activity, and the knight is going to jump in. And with that, black is simply a full pawn up, it seems. I don't see a win yet, but it's getting very close. Yeah, just 97, maybe even 95. I would try to reroute this knight like this, perhaps. And then black should be having a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going to stay here because I'm expecting this, but let's see if that happens. Okay, he's going for a different route. Maybe he's going to go knight c5, knight e6. The reason was the knight wasn't doing very much on b6. It was totally restricted by the pawn on b3. But uh, yeah, the knight is rerouting itself to a better square. Now, don't play knight c5 because then there is a little trick in the position. So knight of eight, knight d6... I, I think I would have, oh, sorry. I think I would have definitely tried knight c8, knight d6, but uh, black should still be a lot better here. All right, so, so far the top players are just doing very, very well. And yeah, we've got Mr. Mishanik here from Russia, which is Alexei Sarana. Sarana doing very well last week as well. Um, I'm not sure how he did in the beginning, but he, he got a top uh, top spot last week as well, although he didn't win a prize. He was doing very well. Time control is also very good, although in this position, black is actually winning. Black is two pawn, no, one pawn up, but he's got the bishop. Okay, this knight is the only annoying piece. And yeah, white's just checking a few times. I think white's playing for the win. But that should not... Black should be better here. E4, very good move by TV. Here's away from... Now I have to cheat a little. From the Dominican Republic. No, 95. No. Okay, that hurts. That hurts. White was, white was winning. Okay, so let's... Uh, black was winning, I'm sorry. So in this position, if black just played... Not queen f3, but king e6. I think black would have still been fine because he threatens queen h1 and there are no big threats. So 
White could win a pawn like this, but after bishop c6, not much is going on, and this battery is going to be extremely annoying for White. So, lucky blow for, uh, lucky game for Miss Hanik. Maybe he has to warm up still, but good effort, of course, of course, by TV uh, Josue. All right, moving on. Let's see if there are still some interesting games like so. Fader Seyf won, Maxime Vachey Le Graf won, uh, Artemi F1. So they are doing all good. Let's check this game. It is Chess Warrior against Gateblas from Spain. Chess Warrior also a pawn down. He needs to be quite careful here. All right. So let me refresh the standings for you guys as well. And as you guys can see, so Sip Elephant winning, Lion Beast as well, Big Fish as well. The big guns are doing very good. And okay, White won the pawn back, but it's still in a little bit of pressure. So actually also take a look at the time difference. Uh, Black has got three seconds left, White has got 18. So I'm expecting a draw. Yeah, also there's not enough material for black to win here. So and now he's just gonna take on g5, take on g5. Yeah, and now it should be a draw. Although we've seen a lot of players trying to play this for a win with the black pieces in this case. So yeah, this might be a very long game. Let's see if there's gonna be if there is something more interesting going on. Uh, let's take a look at Fair Chess on YouTube. Fair Chess is Mr. Dimitri Andrekin. He won his game too. Let's check another one. Uh, there's a Dutch guy still playing. Nope, he also won. So doing good. Uh, Anish, we've got Anish. Anish also won. Anish Giri, obviously. And the rook versus rook and knight ending has been a draw. So I'm waiting for the games to update to see if there is still a game being played. And yeah, it's it's taking some time. Okay, I'm just gonna scroll through the games. So wonderful time one. Then we've got here dropstone uh, one. There's one game left. That's this one. Uh, this should be a draw because the bishop is covering f3. And even if you get the king over here, it should still be a draw. So yeah, we're waiting for this one to end and then the next round will start. So yeah, this will be a very fast paced tournament, everybody. The next round will start immediately after this one is done. So yeah, it will be high paced. Bishop takes a free and it's a draw. Very nicely done. All right, so we are directly moving on to round two. And yeah, let's see if the standings have been updated. Yes, they have. Ah, there are actually more Dutch players participating than last week. So that's good for me, I like. Of course, to see a lot of my countrymen participating. And yeah, in the chat, let me know uh, who you're rooting for. Um, uh, yeah, where you're from, what kind of drink you're having, if you're having popcorn and such. Yeah, just, just have a good time. Uh, grab a conversation in the chat. So, all right, round two has started. Let's move on. Let's start once again with Sip Elephant. And he is board one, and this is an interesting opening. Yeah, so it's a sort of Grundfeld gone wrong by black. And I need to type something. And now I'm fully focused again. All right, so bishop f5. So why did I say go wrong? Well, because usually why doesn't uh, black wants to play a move like c5 very quickly, but that's not possible right now. It still needs some time to produce that. 
and white could maybe start thinking about playing something like b4 bishop b2 and then it seems like white simply has the space advantage in this position i'm expecting b4 to be played but uh, to stop c5 although c5 is not exactly a threat because white can simply take and there's a rook now on the d file so this should be maybe there's even something better bishop d2 very solid it allows c5 which i did not like but black plays knight b6 and now after queen a3 i'm thinking that white has a solid advantage or queen b3 why not the bishop is rerouting itself to e1 making room for the rooks on the c file and d file and okay white's slightly better not that much but still i would i would definitely pick white in this position all right moving on uh let's see let's check of course another top player that we haven't checked yet so aziri chess with the white pieces which is uh shak mamajarov from azerbaijan i know this open nope i do not and how is shark doing he's playing against the grandmaster oksuna from israel um who i might need to know but all right or is that israel that no actually that's argentina i believe yeah let me check yep that's argentina don't cry for me argentina all right so queen c5 Okay, I'm sorry you had to experience that. Well, queen c5, black is, I like black's position actually. The pawn on b5 is very weak. And there's a, the knight on d5 is supporting b4. So I'm thinking actually that black is the one that is, that white is actually the one that's having the trouble here. And that's why Shaq is thinking for some time now. Yeah, he's trying to bail out with knight c6, so bishop takes, b takes, queen takes. Uh, let me just put it on the board, by the way. And now after taking, taking, queen takes b4, it's simply a draw. But uh, black has other options as well. So, for example, he could simply take with the rook. And then black should be a full pawn up. Shaq is in deep trouble here. I don't know, he might be... Yeah, this, might, this is not, not good at all for the Grandmaster from Azerbaijan. All right, moving on. Let's see if he can, he can still win this or clutch this out somehow. Uh, let's move on to another. Ah, we see here a player that did very well last week. Mr. Aryun Erigaisi with the white pieces. Last week he, he beat someone... Uh, because of a rook blunder. I think he, he beat Mama Jarov last week because Mama Jarov uh, blundered a full rook in a position that was supposedly uh, winning for Shaq, actually. So how's Aryan doing? He's got a little more space, but uh, no weaknesses to count on. Black could even play a move like f4 and there's nothing much going on. It's too close of a position that... White should be able to play for a win here, but of course with time control you never know. B5 might be very risky though. If you take take and white can create a past A pawn, black could be in deep trouble here. So B5 I, I don't like very much. But it should be still okay. It should be within March. And I like the knight on H4, which is covering F3, so the king is on yeah that's the carmel t so the king on f2 is forever bound to this f3 pawn so basically this should be a, a draw all right uh, so the standings are being updated and your uh the player that you're rooting for might already be on 2-2 for example mr gogiev on place two that's mr anton korbov from ukraine on two out of two did very well last week as well and right let's move on to something more exciting mm. right so mr kasper schoppen from the netherlands he got famous because he was the one who beat the all-time record for puzzle rush 
And uh, he showed us that memorization in Puzzle Rush is very important. So he's also a very good Blitz player. He got the silver medal, I believe, in the European Championship, the online European Championship. So yeah, I'm having big hopes for Kasper Schoppen, who is actually already a grandmaster. He's only 17 or 16 years old, so yeah, that's why I'm giving him a little extra attention. How is he doing? Well, not doing too well. He's doing all right, but I mean, mostly because of time. Because he has 30 seconds versus free. Oh, I'm hoping there will be a rook takes h6 at some point. Oh, wait, does that work? Yeah, the rook is hanging now. So I'm guessing white is completely winning at this point. Mm, how to win exactly? Well, maybe just rook takes b7 and rook b8 perhaps. Should be good. Um, so yeah, full exchange up. Queen e6. Oh, no queen e6. Okay, now it's not that clear. Okay, now it is clear because if he needs to exchange, then he's just an exchange up. This is winning. So Artemi F1, Aryan won. Let's check back with Aziri Chess, which is a draw. So Mamajarov managed to make that a draw. I think that was a good result for him because he was struggling most of the time. And yeah, Kasper Schoppen managed to win. Let's see if there is still some other games going on. We've got Timur Gareyev with the White pieces from the United States versus Zoo 96. I would have guessed it was from China, but apparently it's from Russia. What's this? White's pulling up in a night end game. Usually that means it's winning, but um, you know, black is losing. Yeah, queen g7. If h6, knight f5, you should win the game with the h pawn, but this is also fine. You know, you've got all the time in the world as white, so you could even go back and play king e5. Nope, that's not good, because if you do that, then black has knight c4, and that should not be the best way to go. Instead, knight f5, knight x h6 is now on the board, and yeah, I think the h pawn should clutch it out. Just run with the h pawn, the knight needs to sack at some point. Then it might be a draw. This might still be... Interesting. No, knight d7. Very nice finish here. Yeah, h7. The pawn is unstoppable. Look at the time though. Oh, okay. It's just resignation. That's very respectful. I would have definitely tried to maybe... Well, because there's only seconds left on the clock, maybe try to clutch it out as black. But uh, yeah, very respectful. And let's see who's next. Oh, let's see how Ginger GM is doing. Ginger GM lost his game, unfortunately, uh, against Infernal Xum. So Infernal Xum is on two out of two. And yeah, the standings are updating as we speak, everybody. We still got more, over 30 players with two out of two. And how many participants are, uh, are participating? 527 players are participating, everybody. Of which, of course, there are a lot of grandmasters as well. Whew. All right, so this is hectic. How are you guys doing? Can you guys follow everything? I mean, there is also a chance that you can uh, look at the tournament yourself. You can uh, just go to chess.com, click on tournaments in live chess, and then you can follow all the games uh, yourself. All right, but of course, you're welcome also to listen to this Dutch guy who is not very good at Title Tuesday. I think I almost always got more than 50%, but I never really got a, got a chance to play for the prize. Although I did beat uh, Hikaru at some point. Yeah, that was one of the highlights of my uh, online chess career. Yeah, it was a nice game. All right. So round three is starting, everybody. That rhymed for some reason. And we are moving on, obviously, when the next games are coming in. And they are coming in. So let's take a look at Sergei Karyakin, how he's doing, how his opening is. Sergei Karyakin. Uh, yeah, one of the 
many top grandmas participating in Tidal Tuesday. So if you're just dropping in, let me give you a quick reminder. By the way, of the formats, uh, probably everybody, uh, well, maybe not. Let's just show it. The format is 11 rounds and every Tuesday and the time control is three minutes with one second increment and the payout is based on chess.com tie breaks. Yep, just a quick reminder, we're playing for prizes. First prize is $750. Yeah, so Black is thinking here. For a moment, Black was seemingly better. I have no idea why the computer would say that because it's a normal position. But okay, queen f5, normal move. I would try and play something like a3 or maybe even put a bishop like this. Looks perfectly normal. Maybe black can play something like e5 at some point. Maybe that's what the computer really liked. Any case, looks like a very quiet and normal opening. Uh, so black played knight bd7. So since the knight cannot go to c6 anymore, Taking on d5 is, usual, is a, usually a good inclusion for white. Um, yep. So let's move on to something more exciting. Yeah, a3, normal move. Preventing any bishop b4 ideas perhaps in the future. And maybe even a push like b4 at some point. All right, moving right along to Fair Chess on YouTube. Uh, yeah, so Dimitri Andrijking started a YouTube channel apparently. And yeah, so everybody follow him on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. That's what everybody says on YouTube. Uh, yeah, and Black is doing very well. This seems to be a some sort of, um, I'm guessing accelerated dragon. No, it's uh, for bishop d7. Yeah, after queen takes d4. Right, interesting opening. Maybe something to study later. But knight takes d3. It seems the black is just winning the c3 pawn. And after that, black should be should be a bit better. Although white does can get uh, does can get some count does can get. I don't know if that's correct English, but alright, so after a5, b5, I'm thinking black is simply a full pawn up here. So fair chess on YouTube is doing wonderful, in my opinion. Yeah. All right, we've got here the top female chess player, I think, in this tournament, at least on rating, which is Miss Chess Queen, Alexandra Kostenyuk. Let's see how she's doing against Dropstone. And all right, how is she doing? Not too hot. She is a exchange down. So this should be a win for Dropstone. And sometimes I'm typing, you guys can hear that. And I'll try to, uh, I've got a very clicky keyboard. So uh, yeah, I'll try not to click too much. <laughs> right, uh, so yeah, Dropstone is David Parayanan. Paravian, I'm sorry. And Grandmaster from Russia, obviously. Better pawn structure, exchange up, so he should be beating the chess queen, also from Russia. Next game. Um, yeah, all right, so a lot of Dutch players, like I said, so this time Benjamin Bock. By the way, also follow Benjamin Bock on Twitch. He streams very often, so if you'd like a Grandmaster Insight, then you can definitely check his Twitch channel out. It's very easy to find because it's just his name, Benjamin Bock. So, yeah, I knew him since uh, he was little. And at some point, oh, I wish I could tell that story. We were sharing, well, I can actually. So we were sharing a bungalow to play in a tournament and we, he wanted some baked breads. So, in, and he wanted to put it in the oven but instead of putting it in the oven, he turned on the microwave. And yeah, so what transpired was actually a very smoky bungalow because the bread exploded in the microwave. And uh, yeah, it was uh, since then, yeah, 
I don't trust his cooking very much. <laughs> yeah, um, mind you, he was like 16 years old, so te in his teenager time. So, yeah, good times. So, how is he doing, of course, in this uh, tournament? Well, he's on two out of two. I'd say he's slightly better because of the more active queen. A slightly more active queen, but it should be all right for for black as well. He's playing against uh, GM Oscariot. What flag is that? International. So it might be from Bulgaria. I have no idea. We'll find out. If you guys know in the chat, then please share your uh, knowledge there so that we know who he might be. Uh, time is the, is the same more or less. Now I'm more liking black. I'm liking black more and more because of the active pawns. Black is getting some initiative here. I think Benjamin Bok is in deep trouble actually because now black has got the more active queen and definitely the more active pawn. What happens after d2, king g2 and then queen e2? Or queen e4? I don't know. I think white's in deep trouble here. So Grandmaster can Grandmaster would not be the biggest upset, but still, I know Benjamin he has a very strong Grandmaster. Let's stick with this game because it's a time scramble. Where's the king gonna go? I'm expecting maybe if queen d7 and king h6, okay, but now g5, very nice. Keeping the king trapped on g7, now it should simply be a repetition. So Benjamin Bok saves the game into a draw. Which is not a bad result, but uh, yeah. All right, I guess with this queen ending, maybe black had a chance somewhere. But in the end, it turned out to be a draw. So the results are dropping in. Let's check back on Sergei Karyakin. He seems to be two pawns up, so this should be a win against XDPS from Chile. And actually, Sergei already won his game. Then we've got on Drag King uh, technically winning this rook ending. Whoa, rook B. <laughs> I like that try. Why not? Why not go YOLO with uh, rook B1 here? All right, maybe he doesn't spot it and plays uh, F6 as a pre move. I don't know. All right, another Russian Grandmaster, Evgeny Nair, playing against Godoplas, who we actually already saw in the previous round as well. Is it getting some attention from the Dutch screamer here? It's not intentional, but um, yeah, he seems to be losing against Evgeny Nair, of course, a 2600 player from Russia. Very strong grandmaster, did very well in the European Championship at some point, so not surprised he's got two and a half. All right, so... Hmm. Where shall we go to next? I'm waiting for the games to update so that I can see which games are still playing. And in the meantime, you guys can check the updated standings. So we still got over 30 people with three out of three. That's what you get with a lot of participants. And ah, we saw an ending like this last week as well. Swimmer Chess playing against Flawless Fighter from Russia, female Grandmaster. And it was a successful draw for the uh, Russian player against Swimmer Chess, who is known to be doing very well in these type of tournaments as well. So very strong Blitz player. Oh, this is interesting. Wanna be 2700 from what country is this? American Samoa. All right, against Shivalov, candidate monster, and it's been a draw. Not much potential. Two knights versus a king is a objective draw. So, and actually, that's all the games. Yeah, from round three. So keep an eye out for the updated standings. Peter Fittler, Exotic Chess, also Exotic Chess being Baduir Bava, also doing very well with three out of three. And yeah, once again, over 30 people still with three out of three. And we're moving right along with round four. So, okay, this, let's check Chess Mood, which is 
a player from Armenia, a grandmaster. So I've known, I know that Rook takes e three is a Petrosian sacrifice, and but it's not played by the black player here. I'm playing against Yuri Kutsubov. Um, yeah. Also, twenty six hundred player from Ukraine. So neat little trick. If you play f4, this is what you need to be careful about. Obviously, everybody in the chat saw that. But uh, yeah, so if I were black, maybe just king h1, maybe even g4 first and then f3. Uh, actually, if you play g4, then there's another neat trick of knight g3 perhaps, but with this one again. Uh, but yeah. That's probably the complicated thing here. So that's why rook fe1, very solid. Not disrupting any knight g3 ideas. So the plan is eventually to play f4. But uh, you should prepare it. And I like how white is doing this very quietly with bishop f1. First playing g3, then f4 perhaps. But if g3, then white needs to account for knight takes g3. So... Yeah, very complicated opening. Black seems to be knowing what he's doing. He's got almost 50 more seconds on the clock than white. So he's doing very well. And yeah, by the way, uh, everybody, after this round, we are going to have a small break, a scheduled break. Uh, we're calling it a fair play break so that we can uh, get, the get the pairings right. And uh, yeah, I can also take a little breather then. And you guys can also get can gra grab a snack, pet the dog, feed your fish or whatever. And uh, why is taking such a long time here though? Five minute break everybody, off to this round. I think uh, this is Black's game. You cannot lose that much time in this opening without getting punished. All right, so let's take a look at Exotic Princess. So that is Badur Yubava. Sacrificing a pawn in the opening, he missing a B pawn. Well, he's grabbing some initiative on the king side. It's not that much though. So I'm actually thinking that Tempo Chess from the United States is doing very well in this tournament. Yeah, with three out of three as a grandma, as a feeder master. That's pretty incredible, and he's doing very well against Badur Yabav as well, who doesn't really have anything going on the king side at the moment. I don't see a lot of tactics. Black is getting some initiative on the queen side. I think uh, Badur Yabav is in deep, deep uh, trouble. Deep doo doo. If that's an expression, I don't know. Yeah. All right, so Badur Yubava in deep, deep trouble. Let's move on to the next one. We've got a Gogiev. Uh, that's Anton Korobov playing a very sharp opening, it seems. Got the bishop pair. I would be happy to exchange queens. Just move the bishop out, castle, and white is definitely better here. Yeah. Just a uh, bishop pair on the board, got some pressure over the h file. The king is quite weak, the knights are dominated. Uh, yeah, it's white is definitely better. How to continue? I don't know. Maybe just a move like rook d6 makes a lot of sense. Just activate everything. Maybe even a move like rook h4 to get, get the rook. Maybe some file action or f3 with this kind of idea. Well, it's definitely better here, and he's playing against uh, Alexur from Russia. Obviously, every Grandmaster here is very strong. Most of the Grandmasters who are participating have got a 2600 rating. So, yeah, we've got some results. Joshua Kidd has got 4 out of 4. Uh, Fida Master from the United States doing very well. First results of this round and Mama Jarov also winning his game so he's on three and a half out of four um I don't know white's threatening bishop a6 the knight c4 very good move yeah I'm not so sure if white has too much now 
no bishop pair anymore. The bishop can go to f5. Very nice move. Okay, it's still a game. Uh, time is about equal. But uh, this should be more or less all right for, for both players. I'm expecting a draw, if not a very hectic time scramble. All right, let's move on. Let's check how Anish YouTube is doing. No idea who this player is. Who's this YouTube guy? Well, it's Anish, Anish Giri, obviously, the 2700 player from the Netherlands. Let's see how he's doing. He's a pawn up. Yep, guys, I know how to count. He's one pawn up. I, I'm not sure if taking here was a good idea. Might be okay, but I don't know. This pawn could be a bit annoying here. Black is in time trouble. So 97 and knight c6 back. Ah, okay, the king is going to reroute itself to e6. And the pawn should fall, I believe. Yeah, okay. So black is doing very well. And he's still on three out of three. So doing very well. Um... Actually, we've got some surprises so far. If you take a look at the standings, then you see two FIDE masters, Alexei Sorokin and Joshua Kidd, and actually a Sapunov. Three FIDE masters still on four out of four. That's uh, surprising. Okay, so I guess that was a draw offer by White, I suppose. Black still has a pawn up, so Black should be should be still playing for a win here. Why is this wrong? Maybe b3? Yeah, b3 is queening. There's no way for white to stop it now. If the bishop, he could have played bishop c1. But with the bishop on g7, yeah, that was a time scramble mistake. So Anish Giri is on uh, a full 100% so far. Let's take a look at Onishuk versus Matthias Bluebaum. Matthias Bluebaum with the black pieces, Onishuk with the white pieces. White is a piece up, but at, um, yeah, even this pawn and he should be winning, right? Yeah, white could have taken and it would have won, but this should be even easier. Well, can you force a mate? Hmm. Oh, he could have. He could have actually forced a mate, but... All right, this is very clean. So, Onishuk winning his game against Matthias Bluebound. Let's move on to another game. Uh, let's check another U another Twitch streamer, Mr. GM Krikor, for all you fans out there. Uh, famous player from Brazil. <clears throat> Also got his own Twitch channel, everybody, so do give him a follow. Rook d3 should be a simple draw, but instead he's going for the Philidor. Rook ending, so Kikor should be able to keep this uh, draw. Yeah, if he can get... Okay, that's easy. And it's a draw. So Kikor making a draw against the 2700 player, I think he will be very happy with. Then we've got here a game that's already over. So let's move on to another game that's already over. Come on, I need a game that's still going. Aha! Yeah, but this will be over shortly. <laughs> All right. All right, so checking, yep. All right, actually, everybody, so round four is about to end. I uh, need to get a break in after this round. So there's a scheduled break after round four and after round eight with still seven rounds more to go, 11 rounds in total. So don't go anywhere. I will be right back after a short break, everybody. And yeah, let's use this layout. Why not? Now you can see a close-up if you want to see that. I don't know. Maybe you absolutely do not want to see that. 
Anyway, this is my ending screen. So a small break, everybody. We'll be back in five minutes. Don't go anywhere. Grab a snack, pet the dog, feed the fish. And we'll be right back with more Tidal Tuesday.
and we are back so did you miss me well probably not but all right so title tuesday is going on of course with round five let me give you guys a quick reminder of what's at stake today so here we go um yeah it's this button yep and of course let's take a quick look at the current standing so far so actually there are still a bunch of people on four out of four but as you guys can see there are actually some feeder masters who are playing very well in this tournament so far uh going on with the let me actually make a small change to this overlay yeah so this is slightly better all right so um yeah some feeder masters are doing very well so it's not only a grandmaster party title tuesday but it's uh yeah, it's always nice to see some surprises in the tournament and yeah round five has started but before we uh we go on with the with the games let's uh take once again a quick look at the format because it's not your uh, how do you say your speed chest title tuesday it's a normal regular title tuesday and that's what's happening from now on every week so here you go it's a format with 11 rounds, so there will be a determined winner. Last week it was Hikaru Nakamura, and uh, with an amazing last round fight against uh, Artemiev, Mississippi Elephant. Hikaru is not participating at this time, but he might be, of course, at another week. So here we've got the schedule every Tuesday at 10 a.m. PDT. Or 19 CESD so because of winter time has not happened in the US yet it's actually 6 CEST at the moment for us Europeans out there but uh, next week it will all still be at 7 or 19 CEST three minutes with one second increment and payout will be based on chest comp tie breaks what are the prizes well you've asked it and I will deliver seven hundred and fifty dollars is the first price second price 400 150 100 for fourth place and then the best female and best stream i should say not best stream but best streamer uh gets 100 dollars as well so enough talk about this we need to check some games how are the games doing well first i'm, I'm curious if there is a result yet no nope, no result yet but let's move on with board number one, which is Karyakin. Playing against Alexei Sorokin. One of the few FIDA masters that are doing very well in this tournament so far. Okay, update. 18 players have got uh, four out of four. Uh, scratch that, 19 players have four out of four. Yet, but uh, the top players are getting uh, the top is getting more condensed with each round so and of course more top players are playing against each other I, I like this setup for black it's very unorthodox but the knight on g7 is kind of worrying me so i would really consider playing g4 and knight h5 to get the worst piece in my position out there but with the knight on h5 and then knight of six, maybe black is actually doing perfectly okay because this is the weak square for black, but white can never go get there, or at least it's gonna take a really long way to get to the e5 square. Wow, that's a nice drawing, by the way. Yeah, all right, so white is not, not necessarily lost, but black's position is not that bad. Black might actually be a little bit better even. So knight e2, I'm expecting a maneuver like this. Yeah, there you go. Dutch guy on fire. Predicting top player moves. I'm happy with myself. But okay, uh, Black's doing the same. <laughs> All right, interesting opening. Maybe something worth checking at the very least. So let's see how Anish YouTube is doing. Anish on YouTube. This looks like a very theoretical Karakon. Yep, I was correct. So this ending, white is a pawn up, but black has a very solid position. Uh, no real weaknesses in the camp except for the c6 pawn. 
but white has got two weak pawns as well this guy very awkwardly defended by the knights on e3 by the way how, what did you guys do during the break i got myself some camilla tea there's actually some sugar in the, in the tea yeah so cheers as you can see it's still quite hot some sugar in the tea why because i don't get enough sugar at home no although that would be a clever joke everybody but no uh sugar because i need some energy yeah it's very hectic of course to follow all these games so i well i could use some sugar yeah all right technically that's a correct term okay but anish uh, winning a second pawn so far these pawns are still weak but uh, the more pawns the better of course and actually rook of six anish is doing very well of course he should not take on a6 because then there's a little battery in the position and white black white white loses some exchange but of course any spots all that and just gives a check and plays king f1 very solid stuff anish doing very well though it's not over yet i'm expecting black to win this pawn back somehow by pushing the rook away from the g5 square exchanging this rook and okay white still has a long way to go but anish doing very well nonetheless right let's check joshua kid a uh, joshua kid not joshua tree from the u2 album no it's joshua kid it's against exotic princess who was losing in the last game but managed to win it in the end anyways so yeah mr swindler we might call him now uh seems to be winning yeah rook b3 very strong move there's no way to defend the g3 pawn if knight h1 simply rook b1 rook b1 not rook b2 and uh, you win the knight so this is over exotic princess winning one of the surprises of the against one of the surprises so far in this tournament joshua kid going five out of five along with three other players so far vladislav kovalev uh, Raunuk Sadwani, very strong young Indian player, Hossum and Harsha Baratakoti. Excuse my pronunciation, probably I'm butchering that everywhere I go. All right, uh, let's check another game. Uh, Anton Demchenko versus Chess Warrior. So Anton Demchenko, very strong Russian grandmaster playing against Chess Warrior, which is Abdu Satorov, very young, strong grandmaster, one of the brightest uh, Uzbekistan players, uh, and actually one of the brightest young players in the world. He's fight white is fighting, but black obviously in the lead here exchange up could consider just playing rook d2 rook takes h2 and this pawn cannot be stopped i believe yeah king g2 is met by rook f1 knight h3 is this actually winning no it's a draw now because after king h2 the pawn on h2 will fall yeah now it's a draw this is a drawn rook ending so chess warrior probably missing a win somewhere and therefore they will not get to the four and a half out of five but they should make a draw although white's not playing this very well white's in trouble here a little bit not too much but it's still a draw but white needs to be careful not to lose here very careful but okay highly likely that this will end in a draw so let's move on to another game wait 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 wait, wait, wait. Net, just while i say that this what huh what, uh, how is black oh rook c8 black was winning black was winning somehow okay never mind moving right along now to draw again yeah 
All right, so let's take a look at Grandmaster Sanan Shugirov against OK97, OK, from Israel. Yep, this time from Israel. Black, a lot of pawns up, but this pawn is a problem. White's got also slightly more time. Draw offer made, declined. Black has two pass pawns, but the king and the pawn. Yeah, this is the wrong colored pawn. Black has the wrong colored bishop now. So white has an easy way to draw this. Just give this bishop to for this pawn and it should be a draw. Okay, I don't see white losing this. So moving we're right along. What games are still going on? Oh, this is an interesting ending actually. Yeah, very fanatical. Now it's a draw because uh, the, the king cannot really help the position here. The rook simply stays here. There's nothing that uh, that can happen here. If this pawn was on f6 and the king was on f7, then it was winning for white. But now it's a very easy draw. So, yeah. Let me check if there's something I'm missing. Nope, I'm not missing anything. So this is a draw. Let's move on. Draw offer. Black one. David Kalashian from Armenia. Winning his game against MF1966. It sounds like a... I don't know. Maybe a barcode name or something. All right, uh, is there a game playing? Nope, this is a draw. So there you have it. Let me upload updates, not upload. Let's uh, check the standings real quick. So I've got Karyakin, Anish on YouTube, Exotic Princess, and we've got eight players total. We're five out of five, and then we've got about 11 to 12 players with four and a half out of five. And actually, the Dutch guys are doing very well. Three Dutch guys with four and a half at least. Hmm. That's nice. All right, so let's take a look at the big clash of round six. They, as I said, they uh, round the rounds start very quickly after a round is finished, and this looks like well, Anish is doing very solidly here i'm thinking that this should be actually i like black's position slightly better he's got some momentum going on the queen side it should not be that much a slightly better bishop as well though this bishop is not necessarily bad on this diagonal but i think i prefer black slightly not if white simply plays b3 there's not much going on so yeah very quiet game let's try and find something more exciting so Jumbo against Karyakin, okay, not at all more exciting. It's a simple draw between the two. Moving right along. Uh, a nice clash between two of the top players. Knight b3 gaining the bishop pair. And this is what you call a very successful King's Indian opening for Valislav Kovalev. White still has the space, but you need the bishop pair in order to get something going here. As white so I'm saying that black is doing perfectly fine draw offer from black it seems let me check that oh no um, no from white and black declined the draw actually yeah black declined the draw and I would say that's a good choice he has the very comfortable bishop pair he's got the more active uh, very nice pawn chain over here and compared to other kings indians this is simply a very pleasant game to play all right uh let me catch my breath for a second ah, that's a good day uh, thank you very much for allowing me to take that break all right um yeah interesting stuff uh, black is doing very well here, I believe. Another first uh, 
yeah, clash of the top players. So these players still have five out of five. Yeah, Clemente uh, Sichev from uh, Russia against Harsha Baratakoti, another Indian name that we have to add to our to watch list. Knight of four, who's better and why? Why it's better? Because simply because the king is castled, all the pieces are developed, and yeah, this bishop on c8 is still a problem. So why it's definitely better. But this blockade on e5 makes things very difficult for white to break through. I would say you need to play something like a3 and b4. What with the draw offers today? Hmm. No, that's not a draw offer. Okay, no, it's just the person talking in the chat. All right. Yeah. Um, a4 instead, playing... Uh, Pushing a5, just trying to keep control. Uh, not a bad choice. I think white's clearly better. Time is about the same. So this could go either way. Uh, still more than 500 participants in this title Tuesday, everyone. So yeah, a very competitive scene today once again, like every week. I like queen g5, simply disrupting white's play. But okay, I would just play a5, maybe double the rooks on the f-file, maybe even considering rook b1 and b4. Um, but yeah, b4 I don't like because after taking knight c5, black gets a very good knight on c5 as well. So Okay, white is struggling to get a good, uh, to make some progress here. Uh, 96 looks like a very tempting sacrifice not played so why 96 uh let me show you guys real quick well the knight needs to move but it doesn't have a good square to go let's say you go to f8 and after rook takes d6 or maybe even knight d5 white's getting a lot of initiative in return knight f6 is a threat bishop f4 yeah so this is something that black needs to keep an eye out for but Instead, b3 played, bishop b7, queen g3, queen e7, knight b1. I don't know. It seems to me like white is struggling to find the right plan here. It seems to me like black is doing more or less all right. All right, moving right along. Let's check uh, Twitch streamer battle. Benjamin Bock against GM Krikor. Yeah, so Krikor has been streaming on Twitch quite a long time now. And Benjamin Bock recently started a few months now. Who's better and why? Uh, do give them a follow, everybody. Uh, they are very easy to find. Just type in their names on Twitch and you'll find them. White has more time, but Black has got the, the weakness on the board. And White wants to get a knight to either f5 or d5. But the question is if white can manage that. That's why going back to d7 is a bit unfortunate. If the knight can get all the way to there, then he should be doing all right. So, but maybe simply g6, knight d7, instantly replied by knight f5, king h8. I'm thinking that white's taking over here. What if you take and play queen takes d6 next? Mm. It's on the board. Uh. Okay, black cannot take here because there's a mate on d8. White's a pawn up. Krikor is doing very well. Simply a pawn up. Yeah, simply a pawn up. In time trouble. So we've got some results. Exotic Princess winning against Anish Giri, so he's on 6 out of 6, and Ranak Sadwani, the youngster from India, uh, with also with 6 out of 6, beating Kovalev. Kayakin quick draw against Jumbo. Bortnik winning also, so 5.5 out of 6. And what's going on here? I think Krikor is in trouble now because this pawn is very dangerous, especially after rook g5. Is it though? No, they they promote equally, so now this should be more or less a draw. 
Yeah. Just check away. If I were white, I would check away. You can even take. No, you can't. No, you can't. You're one tempo too late. Uh, no, you're not. Oh, this is so unfortunate. Okay, so this is the... This is the... Oh, that's... That's time trouble for ya. Yeah, unfortunately, so Benjamin Borg clutching it out in time trouble. Winning his game against Krikor. Streamer battle won by the Dutchman. Wow. He's on five and a half out of six, doing extremely well. So let's check Gogiev. Nope, never mind. Also on five and a half at the moment. Uh, Blitzstream. Winning four out of six. Yeah, I'm checking the streamers a little bit. So Dina Belenkaya also streaming, I think, on Twitch. Yeah, since uh, the pandemic struck, a lot of players have been streaming on Twitch. So yeah, a lot of entertainment for you to enjoy. I do that too, by the way. Check my channel, Monkey Chess. That was not a wink. Ha. Huh. So yeah, I'm not sure why. Moving on, uh, not that interesting of an end game. Uh, White should be winning. Uh, so yeah, let, she should be clutching this out. Should go off winning his game against Legend Legend Din, unknown. Maybe the female version of Legend. Maybe that's the point. I'm not sure. G M Aka. Uh, winning, no draw of course. Ferruja. We haven't seen Ferruja that much. Maybe he lost the first game or he joined late and he cannot win this game anymore. Yeah, so against Tiger v. Shuljeep. That's actually Mr. Khatakamski for you. He has, yeah, a very interesting username. So he's drawing with the black pieces against Ferruja. Ferruja, not in the top standings at the moment. He will be a four and a half out of five, out of six. So let's take a look at the standings. So far, only two people with six out of six. Exotic Princess, Mr. Badur Yubava from uh, Georgia and Ranak Sadwani from India. Then we've got nine players with five and a half out of six. Amongst them, uh, Gogiev, Sergei Karyakin, Bortnik, Crescent Moon from Vietnam, and other players as well. And nice notion, uh, Chess Queen uh, is doing very well as well. She's got five out of six. So, so far, she is the best female player in this tournament. Looking strong for the $100 first uh, female prize. Yeah, so you, I, I'm, I just noticed a fun drinking game. So you have to take a shot whenever the 50 move rule is reached. No, that doesn't work. All right, moving right along. But we, you can, you can get really creative like that. Yeah, you can. Like 50 move rules or endings that are totally drawn but still played on to play for a win. How about that? Yeah, but then you have to check about 250 games because we have 500 participants. Yeah, I don't see how it work. Okay, but you can get creative like that. Okay, uh, round seven is immediately going on. And yeah, let's check, of course, the first top matches immediately. Exotic Princess playing once again this exchange Slav, which he managed to win also against Anish Giri in the last round. He seems to be having fun with him. And yeah, playing. So these are the two top players. They are both on six out of six. The only two players with six out of six. And I guess White's doing slightly better. 
of course, the thing is about um, symmetrical positions is that the one with the extra tempo should always be slightly better. And here, white can even grab a pawn. I'm not sure you want to. You could. I think theory says you shouldn't. Yeah, okay, so there you go. Yeah, I've seen this. I've seen this before, yeah. I, if I remember correctly, then you should not take yours. That's take the pawn as white. So yeah, probably queen f4. White slightly pressuring black, but not too much. It should be okay for black somehow, but yeah. White is uh, white's having the fun at the moment. Queen b6. The point is that rook b1 cannot be played because of the bishop. But if white plays c4, maybe white's slightly better still. But yeah, keep in mind, everybody, this is just all within margin because it's not too much at the moment. But Yubava's having fun with this position, so this opening. So you never know. F3, good move, preventing knight e4. Uh, active knight, passive knight on f6. White is simply slightly better. And with that, I'm going to say moving right along with board two. Um, Gogia versus Karyakin. So Anto Korobov versus Sergei Karyakin. Who's better and why? I don't see a lot of problems with the black position. I like black so far, but... Okay, d5 is a very good move. The bishop on b7 is looking at a pawn chain now. If c6, simply c4. White's got space advantage. Maybe knight h4, knight f5, short castle. Maybe white is slightly better because of the more active, uh, more space and the open f file. But I don't know. I, I can see this go wrong really quickly for, for white as well. Yeah, because there are some tactics in the air. Dark c1, very solid, allowing black to take here. But the bishop is a very glorified pawn at the moment, so that's not a bad exchange for white. Although, yeah, white's not giving black the option. Black never has to take, but white gave your opponent the option. So now he's planning knight h4, I'm pretty sure of it. And... Yeah, if c takes, bishop a6 is annoying, so probably e takes. Yeah, e4. Black's getting counterplay. It's going to be a messy game because the knight's moving over here. And white's going to get his knight here. But the e-pawn could be very annoying in many cases. So a very complicated game. Uh, white's got much less time. He's got one minute left on the clock. So Gogiev has got much and much more time. And every second counts is this in this uh, tournament. So, yeah, looking very good for Anton Korobov. Let's take a look at board number three, which is Benjamin Bock versus Sichev Clementi. Uh, we don't yet have results in the top of the standings, but I'll keep you updated. Yeah, keep below my camera, uh, keep in check below my camera. The standings are constantly updated. So yeah, if you're curious about that, don't look at the board, don't look at my camera, but look at the standings. And here, yeah, still, they're doing they're spending a lot of time in the opening. I think Hikaru would be so upset right now. Because they've spent over two minutes on the first 18 moves. Which you usually do not do in Blitz games. But Yeah, these players both prioritize the opening it seems. Alright, so I like white. But only if this knight gets into the action somehow. For example, knight b3, knight c5, knight b3, knight d4. Otherwise, I think the black's doing all right. Yeah, queen a2, so knight b3 in the next move. And I think black's slightly better, but we've got 25 seconds on the clock versus 29. What a slow game. You don't see this very often. 
Oh, uh, I need to go back to Karyakin against Korobov because Karyakin is down to three seconds. Where's Korobov? Korobov doing some work here. He's a pawn up. And now a full piece. <clears throat> so there you go. Even top grandmasters can struggle in this type of format. Just playing too slow and yeah, Gogiev just uh, being better in every fashion. All right, next game. Let's check board one once again. Exotic Princess playing once again. Uh, struggling a bit. The king looks a bit awkward on G3. Uh, Exotic Princess has more time on the clock. But Sadwani nicely opening up the position. White going for it. Queen takes f4, queen takes g5. How do you stop c8 now? Well, there you go with queen f5. I think white missed the win there. I think white missed the win. Okay, and now it's... Uh, uh, what's going on here? Black and check forever, I think, yeah? Yeah, black and check forever. Uh, white's, of course, threatening queen d8, so... Okay, I'm going to show that because that was white missed the win. So let me show you guys what happened here. White should have played here, rook d8. And after rook d8, c8 wins a full queen for white. And it's also nicely protecting rook d3. So rook d8 would have won the game for white. A missed win for exotic princess, but no biggie because he's still a six and a half out of seven in the lead together with a lot of other players as well. Right, so we still got a lot of other games to cover. Well, actually, of course, time scramble is almost over. So uh, Benjamin Bork losing in the end against Sichev. So Sichev now also in the lead with um, the top player. So no player still on 100%. We've got seven players, six and a half out of seven. I don't see any games left. Well, let me quick, let me just check some games. No, there are some games still moving on. This is winning for Alexur. He's on five and a half against Becca95. Uh, Mr. Indijic from Croatia. Uh, Indijic did very well last week uh, playing for the top spots, but now he seems to be out of the race for... <clears throat> uh, for a prize. So yeah, keep in mind the standings, everybody. So we've got seven players with six and a half out of seven. Uh, Ronak, Sadwani, Exotic Princess, Gogiev, Exotic Princess, Baduri Bava, uh, Sichev, Clemente, Crescent Moon from Vietnam. I think that's... Uh, I have to check. I, I'm, I have a I have a good hunch who that is. We've got Bilo Dal from Russia, another strong Russian player, and Jumbo from Uzbekistan. Jumbo, I'm guessing that's Jumbayev from Uzbekistan, one of the top top players from. Is that Uzbekistan? No, that's actually Kazakhstan. <laughs> one of the top players from Kazakhstan. He was doing very well in the online Olympiad. So, yeah. Nope. Not a lot of games left. We're waiting for round eight to start. And everybody, after round eight, uh, we still have a another break. Let's call it a fair play break if you want. Uh, first of all, and second of all, uh, pair for the pairings and also for uh, your host, so that I can grab some more tea with some sugar, maybe, and. Uh, yeah, I don't know, just take a break uh, and a breather. All right, round eight started, so five minute break after this round. Keep that in mind, everybody. Let's move right along with board one. Sadwani, Sadwani playing against Clementi Sichev from Russia. Now, usually this is a draw offer, but it seems like White is actually playing for a win here. So interesting opening, maybe worth checking. Symmetrical position should not be so much 
for white. But if anybody is better, then it should be white slightly because of the knight on c6. Uh, after c3, the knight's a bit stuck there, needs to get rerouted at some point. That takes time, so white should be slightly better, but it should also not be too much. Yeah, interesting opening though. Yeah, I like this move. If f6, weakness on the board. You don't want to weaken you weaken your king side too much. That's why 97 is a very logical reply. And here I would seriously consider c4. Trying to play active, trying to get some more control. It does give you an uh, isolated pawn, but I think it's justified. Uh, white simply has some pressure in this position. Good opening choice. Might be interesting to check that out after I'm done with the host. Okay, but after bishop d3, bishop h4, bishop f5, black might be still simply okay. All right, moving on to board number two. Jumbo versus Bilo Doe. So we're checking the top uh, players in the standings, everyone. So seven players and six and a half, followed by eight players, uh, seven layers, sorry, with six out of seven. Amongst others, Anish on YouTube. Uh, so white is a pawn up and it's not just any pawn, white is this pawn up. So Bilo Doe from Russia seems to be uh, struggling in this one. So I hate typing something everyone. Um, yeah, so white, this bishop is very annoying as well because white's got free range over the b-file. Black cannot do anything with it. Oh, actually, I just got word who b Lodo is. It's actually Alexeyenko. So Alexeyenko, who qualified for the um, candidates. So he's definitely a player to watch from Russia. But now he's not doing too hot. Jambayev seems to be very good. All right. So, yeah, now I know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of usernames that don't make a lot of sense to me. Below Doe. I don't know. Maybe some people in the chat can uh, tell everyone why he's called Below Doe. Alexeyenko. I mean, I'm just Roland, you know. But okay, you can also get creative and call yourself Tiger or Exotic Princess. Why not? In this case, White's doing very, very well. Got one weakness, protected pawn. So Jumbo doing a very, very good. All right, let's check. Uh, mentioning Exotic Princess, let's check, let's check how he's doing. He's a piece up, but against what exactly? Two pawns. Wait, is that a draw offer? No, it's not. Nope, no draw offer. Um, the match is going on. Uh, who's better and why? I'm guessing... How can white continue here? I mean, if white cannot break through, then black must be better. So, And I don't see a clear way for white to... To break through here, so I'm actually guessing that Badir Yabava is doing very well in this position. Yeah, I I think he is. I don't see a way to break through. A plan could be to simply put the king on h7. That's definitely what I would try. Oh, but this is clever as well. Get a bishop on f7, and then get your king to h7. But White's nicely going to counter that by putting a knight on e5. Okay, repeating moves maybe. Okay, so board one is a draw between Sechev and Ranak Sadwani. They are both on seven out of eight. And I'm curious to see how this is going to make progress. Rook d6, very nice move. I'm expecting him to sacrifice the exchange so that the king can simply move to g8. Nope, he's just moving the rook away. And after 95, I have no idea what black's going to do then. Okay, he's, he's going to g8 anyways. 
Yeah, he could have played King G8 a long time ago, but I think it's still all right. Well, I don't know, this battery. Oh, you just don't take back on E7. That makes sense. Okay, these rooks are still looking... Okay, it's not over. Baduria Bava still struggling. He, he should be fine, but it's not so easy. Yeah, it's not so easy, this position. <clears throat> so, like uh, a certain band used to say, you want to break free with black, but you don't know... Yeah, but how do you do that? Because this is the thing that you need to untangle somehow. But with the pawn on e7, that's really, really hard to do. You could... I mean, is this an idea to put a rook on c7? Well, I'm predicting a lot of moves today. I'm on fire. But... Why are you just going to ignore everything? Okay, I'm sticking with this game because uh, we're closing in on time trouble and the results are dropping in on the other boards as well. Um, yeah, no other top board results just yet. But, okay, so... Actually, Obava sacrificed back the piece. Yeah, and playing for a draw here. There's not much else he can do, but now white's suddenly in the lead here. Um, wait, what? But not anymore. Now black has, has got an A-pawn to work with, supported by a bishop on g7. So, I don't know, maybe this is a draw, but I, I think Yobava is in the lead again. Nice, getting some counterplay. Yeah, now offering a draw most likely. Yeah, I think uh, Yabav could play bishop f8 if he wants to. But a draw. Hectic final. Hectic final. And ending a draw. So they are also both on 7 out of 8. Which means that they are still in the lead as well. Fair chess on YouTube. Mr. Dimitri Andrekin uh, winning this game. So he, sh he's, he joined the leaders now with 7 out of 8. Together with Fuga Rasilov from Azerbaijan. Also on 7 out of 8. So, once again, everybody, uh, a scheduled break after this round for five minutes. And so, yeah. Can White win this? I w G5. Okay, there's no... There's. I guess there's... An Can you really play this for a win as white? No, I don't think so. This is a good losing attempt. I think white over pushed. Chess warrior over pushed. Now black suddenly in the lead. Knight coming to e4, supporting both the g3 pawn and protecting the f6 pawn. I think this is black's game now. White over pushed. How do you win this though? Ah, just grab this pawn and then. And then also this pawn if you if you're at it anyways. Yeah. Alright, so Crescent Moon is Mr. Engu Yen from Vietnam. Okay, but this uh, this should be a draw now. Alright, this should be a very easy draw now. Moving on, uh let's see. So the top players are more or less done. This is the only top board still going on. Crescent Moon, uh, Mr. Enguyen versus Abdus Satorov. And this is actually the last game of the round. Wait, but now knight d5 and knight c3 could be... Or knight... Ah, oh, it's winning! It's winning for black now, so black wins. Ah, oh, well, I totally misplayed that. But okay, what can you do with seconds on the clock? <laughs> All right, guys, so going on a short break for five minutes. So once again, feed the fish, pet the dog, uh, grab some popcorn, get some tea with some sugar or without. And I'll see you back in five minutes with some more Title Tuesday. Only player with seven and a half out of eight, Crescent Moon, Mr. Nguyen from Vietnam. Um, and I got this overlay, not for nothing. So here you go. 
and uh, we'll be back in about five minutes everybody don't go anywhere see you shortly
All right, everybody. Um, yeah, so big news. I forgot that the water was cold. <laughs> so I'm drinking now, how do you say? Uh, lewd water. Yeah. So yeah, not the biggest of news, but hey, for me, it's like, uh, yeah, a little bit of a fail there. All right, so, but of course, we are going back with Title Tuesday. And uh, round nine is starting, is, has, or, has already started actually, so we're going right along with the action. So yeah, I mean, if you're just tuning in, my name is Willem Pruisers, I'm a Dutch Grandmaster, and you can follow me on my Twitch channel, which is called Monkey Chess. All right, moving along with Title Tuesday. So these are the standings on below the camera, right there. And you can see who is doing well. So Crescent Moon, Mr. Son Nguyen from Vietnam. The only one who's on seven and a half out of... I'm trying to find his game, but I cannot find it just yet. Instead, we'll just have to start with board number two, which is Vuga Rasulov versus Satwani, who's been doing very well as well in this tournament so far oh well and yeah okay so the opening just started and it should be very solid for white so the thing about positions like this is that black is kind of struggling to find some counterplay if white eventually after developing all, all his pieces first uh creating some counterplay if white actually starts pushing the Queenside pawns at some point. So white's trying, black's trying to be as annoying as possible here with moves like queen f6, bishop f5. I'm expecting an a5 move as well. And then it will be hard for white to push actually on the queen side. And yeah, if white cannot do that, then it should be more or less okay for black. But I like knight h4, just trading off one extra minor piece and then the pawn structure should, should favor white just slightly. All right, so looking good for uh, Sadwani. Very solid. Uh, not a lot of losing chances there anyways. All right, so I need to find Crescent Moon. His game. Okay, it seems that... I'm having trouble finding him. All right, in that case, we'll just have to move on with another top board, which is, of course, the Exotic Princess, Mr. Badir Yubava, playing against Bilo Do, which is Alexeyenko, the candidates, uh, the, the, the player in the candidates, who didn't do too well there. Uh, but, of course, he's playing on the highest level. So, definitely a player to watch out for. And he seems to be doing just a bit better, but this setup is always very solid. It's like White wants to push d5 with a very uh, dr tragic or dramatic breakthrough in the center, blowing up the position, and then White should be a bit better. But with this, with these pawns like this, that's one of the things. That, wait, what about 95? This looks like a mistake. What about 95? Yeah, now, ooh, now black's better. So the point is that d takes, rook takes d3. And actually, if the queen moves, white, black can also opt to take the pawn on c4. So Baduria Bava doing suddenly very well. So yeah, he already beat Anish on YouTube. I, now you guys can have three guesses who Anish on YouTube is. I wonder, but uh, yeah, so that show goes to show, of course, that um, Badur is in top form at the moment. Yeah, just grab the pawn. I mean, look at this outpost for the knight. The knight is gonna jump very happily towards, uh, yeah, the d5 square. So white's trying to do something he has to, otherwise he will just be a pawn down. With h5 is one of the next moves. And yeah, but black should be definitely in the lead. So your Bava, uh, got some good chances to get uh, to stay in the lead or not in the lead, but 
Gets on 8 out of 9, and that gives him good chances to win the tournament still. Next one. Uh, Gogiev versus Jambo, so that is Anton Korobov versus Yumbayev, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from uh, Kazakhstan. He did very well in the online Olympia, the player from Kazakhstan. And uh, yeah, he his team did very well in the Olympia because of his performance as well. So how is he doing? He is a pawn up as black, trading queens, and probably getting a, a second pawn with f5. So actually black might be close to winning here. So Jimbo also showing that he's doing very well. Yeah, seems like it. All right, still checking some of the other games that we can take a look at. So black now, simply two pawns up. Okay, there's a pawn now on a6. But uh, black should still clearly be in the lead, especially after rook b8. Yeah, that's possible. If king f3, king f4. Uh, you can just take everything, play the end game, and then you can have no risk of losing. And... Yeah, simply, well, actually just one pawn up now. So Anton Korobov defending very well here. He's got more time on the clock as well. But black should not have to lose this in any in any case. So very safe winning chances for, for black. Just push the pawn. <clears throat> F4. Yeah, this looks like a very good winning attempt. If king takes c6, f3, and then the knight's going to support the pawn, f2, black should be winning here. Yeah. Or knight b4, knight d3. Very good. Oh, or first take the pawn. Why, why, why the hurry? Yeah. Black should be winning here. All right, so that means that Jumbo doing very good. By the way, also take a look at the standings. Uh, something I did not notice is that what exotic prince is lost alexienko won the game so this push on the king side actually wow okay so i'm just cruising through the game guys but it seems like black couldn't handle the pressure on the king side so well played. I thought it was more or less over, but it seems like Alexienko managed to squeeze the win out of that game. And yeah, Jumbo won his game against Anton Korobov as well. So yeah, that means that Alexienko is actually still doing very well. All right, sorry guys, let me update the standing. So Crescent Moon already made a quick draw. I guess that's why I couldn't find the game. So he's on 8 out of 9 together with Alexienko and... Jumbo so far, 8 out of 9. This is the only top game still going on, but with two pawns, it should be winning for white. Cutting off the king, very nice, and now just running. Running, running, running. And this should be over. So Sadvani also in the lead, probably with 8 out of 9. Yeah, he's the only one who can still get on 8 out of 9. So results are dropping in, everybody. These are all the top results, I believe. Yep. These are all the top results. We've still got some players with six and a half. So we've got Big Fish, which is Fedoseev playing against Andrejka. Young, play young player from Russia. But Fedoseev managed to win. So Fedoseev, Big Fish, still showing that he's one of the best players in online blitz. He's got seven and a half out of nine. Still in contestion. If you take a look at the standings, then you can see that Sergei Karyakin, also on 7.5 out of 9. Fair Chess, which is Dimitri Andreikin and Aziri Chess, they are back into the fight, back into the game, into the tournament with 7.5 and, and Feruja there as well. So they are still in contestion for a prize. Uh, 
what kind of price are they playing for you ask well that's a good question my young padawan i'll show you what that is here are the prizes so the first prize 750 dollars second prize 400 dollars third prize 150 fourth 100 and the best female and the best streamer yeah the best streamer who plays also gets 100 bucks uh as well as the best female player so yeah just a quick reminder everybody and the games uh, there's only one game still going on and of course it's a rook uh knight versus rook ending yeah i mean you could lose this as black as white yeah but uh it should also be oh good one good black of wonder oh black oh, black is winning <laughs> There you go, with king b1, then you've got knight a3, king a1, or rook a2. And if the king goes the other way, then it's knight b2, mate. So there you go. This why this is why rook versus knight endings are, are played on. So sharp chess, losing against Yuri Kotsubov. Even grandmasters fail to win, uh, to make a draw on endings like this. Once in a while, so there you go. And with that, round 10 is immediately starting. So we've got five players in the lead at the moment. Uh, Bilodo, Alexienko is that. Uh, he is Alexienko. And Ranek Sadwani, Suchev from Russia, Jumbo from uh, Kazakhstan, and Crescent Moon from Vietnam. Followed by six players, no, seven. Yep, yeah, seven players, seven and a half out of nine. It will be between those 12 players to win this tournament. I believe the rest is out of contention. But uh, yeah, I think you need... If I... Last week, I think I said you need at least 9 points to grab a prize. Oops. Right, so now luckily I've got the Crescent Moon game. I think I messed up the overlay for a second there, but now we're all good again. All right. So, Crescent Moon, uh, uh, applying the Yobava approach, playing a exchange Slav, which should not be that exciting. But who knows, yeah? I mean, white could pressure. White is not in any danger at the moment. Uh, but once again, 9 out of 11 was enough last week to give you shared second place but uh as we've noted the prizes are divided based on tie breaks and actually i should change the overlay a little bit so that you can see slightly more clearly what the tie breaks are there you go All right so alexienko has got the best Papers, papers. <laughs> when it comes to tie breaks, um, and that's a draw for it should be taken. Yep. All right. So if they make a draw, they have very good chances to get a prize. But uh, of course, uh, to win. Actually, last week there was only one person who won the tournament. And that was none other than Hikaru Nakamura, who's not participating in this tournament at the moment. All right, pawn on f5, that always warms my heart. But uh, yeah, who's better and why? I don't know. White well, seems to be all right. I mean, every piece is working. Uh, Black still has got a weird piece on a6. Um, there's an awkward pawn on e2, but if you can play something like Queen's e2, Rook e1, b4 perhaps in the future, then I think white's doing more than fine. B4 immediately, does that work? If you take everything, knight takes B4, queen B3, knight A6. D6 check, that's a nice trick actually. Okay, so black is not taking on B4, which might be the better idea. So this is what I was calculating everyone. So if you take, take, knight takes, the little trick here is that after queen B3, the knight's trapped, it needs to go back, but then D6, check. White wins a piece. So knight h5 is the better move. And after king f2, a takes, a takes, 
Does it work now? The problem is because if you play queen b3 now, there's a bishop hanging on d4. So this makes things very much different. But rook a7 is an in-between move that could... That is something that white needed to calculate as well. So Ferugia against Jumbo, knight c2. What a move. The idea is bishop takes g7 and then knight e3 in between move. Whoa we Or queen takes g7. What? Let's go. Queen takes, queen takes, queen d4, king e1, knight takes g3. Madness in the house. Who's better and why? I have no idea. Nice creative play by Ferugia there. Bishop takes g7 on the board. Queen takes g7 played. If rook takes b7, then knight e3 comes with a fork. Does it work though? If knight e3 is simply queen moves. I'm guessing white's still better, but what a crazy game this is. What a move, knight c2. I did not see that at all. But after queen d4, king e1, knight takes g3. It's so complicated. I mean, the king is in the... Oh, that's some Dutch for you, if you want to learn some. All right, so the king is in the center. Black's got the initiative. Knight takes f1, wins back the exchange and a pawn. Ah, what a messy game. No, not a Ronaldo game, it's a messy game. Ah, very nice joke. All right, so this could go either way. I'm curious to see who will win because the winner will be still in contention, obviously. All right, so as noted, Crescent Moon and uh, Sadwani with 8.5 out of 10 so far. Uh, a quick draw. Let's move on to board number two. Uh, we're just focusing on the on the top games, everybody. And yeah, to see who will be the victor of this tournament. Uh, no, not the Hugo, but the victor. Wow. I'm not sure if I should be proud of my jokes tonight, but okay. <clears throat> Knight c5. White's clearly better here, I would say. Um, I don't know if I like knight g5. The knight was very nice on e4. Now this knight on c5 is very nice. Yeah, this is a problem. I think white's better. Yeah, black has got more time on the clock though, so that we should not discount that either. Knight d3, why? Why? This doesn't... Oh, knight, rook takes d5 and wants to play. But after rook takes d5, you got rook takes e 4 And if this pawn is gone, then maybe white can get some... Oh, wait, it's over! F7, bishop... Oh, wait, 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 wait. How, how do you win this? Bishop e7 win! No queen e5 check. Oh, I'm so... No, it wins! Because queen e5, king h1, queen takes e7, there's queen h6 mate. And if you take here, then it's queen h6 and queen takes g6... Winning like this. Wow, that's some calculation right there. Black is losing and bishop b7 on the board. Sichev winning the game because queen e5 loses the, does not lose a piece. Because queen h6 is made. So he needs to sacrifice the exchange. But after king takes uh, white simply the exchange up. This should be Sichev's game. Yeah, even... even Keeping the f7 pawn here. This should be winning for white. By the way, uh, Ferugia won his game in that complicated game against Jumbo. So he joins the leaders with 8.5. Uh, together with Aziri Chess, uh, Mamajarov and Karyakin who both won their games. And Fedosev. So the last round will be absolutely exciting. But see Chef. What is maybe even the biggest surprise of this tournament. So let me type something, don't get annoyed by this. And white wins. Wow, we that's some top-notch quick calculation right there. Okay, so we've got, uh, this is the last top game still going on. It's not the last game in the tournament, uh, in this round, I mean. So we've got a nice matchup. <laughs> What to make of this? All right, uh, we've got a nice matchup between Badiri Obav and Sip Elephant. Sip Elephant uh, was very close to winning last 
uh, week's loss. Tied to Tuesday, Mr. Artemiev, but uh, he lost and instead fell out of the prizes. Even though he got 9 out of 11, he, he lost on the tie breaks. Um, yeah, let's see if we've got another one. Nope, I think we should focus on the standings, everyone. So, updated standing, Chef, the only one with 9 out of 10, followed by Karyakin, Sadvani, Feruja, Big Fish, Mr. Fedosev, Azeri Chess, Mr. Mamajarov, and Crescent Moon, Mr. Song Nguyen from Vietnam. All very, very strong grandmasters. We've seen everybody once or twice, at the very least, of course, in top title Tuesdays. Yeah, so there you go. Who are you rooting for, everybody? This is going to be an exciting last round, and we could not have it any better because we've got Feruja playing against Sichev. Oh, actually, this was an opening I was maybe planning to study myself with Black. It should not be good for Black, but it's a very nice surprise weapon, so... Yeah. So Ferruja playing d4, the most straightforward reaction. So this will decide everybody who will win the tournament. Will it be Ferruja or will it be Sichev Clementi? Place your bets, everybody. I don't have odds for you, but uh, Ferruja is a top grandmaster playing with white pieces, so he should be the favorite in this match. Of course, this is not the only match. We've also got Big Fish versus Aziri Chess. Azir Chess pulling out the open Spanish. Wow, that's a wow. That's a long time no see. All right, so Sichev, not the most known player, but he seems to be doing very well on online chess. So I haven't heard that much of him, but uh, I'll keep an eye out for him, of course, uh, in the future. All right, so this should be slightly better for White, although... Uh, not too much, if I'm not mistaken. I analyzed this like five years ago when it was popular. But all right, so queen takes e3, probably exchanges on e5. At some point, you don't have to do it right away, but it's solid enough. Uh, white should be slightly better, but not too much. <laughs> yeah, just rook a8. Yeah, all right, moving on. We've got a lot of ground to cover because these players also are in contention still. Kayakin versus Son and Guyen. Kayakin with the white pieces, obviously. So, let's see. Very positional play. I like this construction with the knights. With queen f3 coming and knight f5, white should be slightly better here. Also notice that the structure is... Seems, seems to be weakened for white, but this, the pawn on c4 is nicely keeping control over any d5 breaks that black might have in the future. So, And usually when you're attacking on the flanks like this, black wants to counter in the center, but uh, that's not happening. And this is why white should have the slight lead at the moment here. Very interesting game. And then we still have one player who was in the race. And that is Mr. No, th these are these are all the players. So these are the three games that we're taking a look at. So moving back towards board one, Clementi, Sicha versus Ferruja. Oh, what's going on? H5. Okay, so black has a damaged pawn structure, but has got the bishop pair instead. If white can play knight d5, forcing, forcing an exchange, then white should definitely be better. But the problem is that after knight d5, white, the black doesn't have to take. Rook h5, preventing knight d5. I like it. And yeah, what's the idea though? f3 probably, but then maybe b4 and d5. I think I like black. The bishop pair is very strong in end games like this. And also very easy to play. Black has got more time on the clock. Ferruja struggling in this game. Knight of five, calculating bishop takes d4 or d5. Which one will he choose? I think d5 looks like the more, uh, the better choice here. Uh, with the idea, of course, that if you take the knight, knight's attacked, don't, that's illegal. The knight's on f5. Yeah, d5. 
I think, oh, Perugia is struggling. Sitchev might be the surprise winner of the tournament so far. Okay, moving back towards Aziri Chess versus Fedoseyev. Um, whoa. Uh, okay, Black's temporarily pulling up. So, Amava Jarov, a lot more time. Bishop, not a nice move. He's getting he's getting the beep pawn. If white takes, black's getting the beep pawn, and then he's got two pass pawns on the board. I think black is doing very well here. Maybe a move like bishop b3 is the way to go, but I don't know. Black is definitely in control here. Much more time as well on the clock. So Mama Jarv looking very strong, also to win a prize in this tournament. Then board number three. Black has got his knights now very actively placed. Still no counterplay in the center, but not too much going in, going on right now. White should maybe. Oh, White's got a lot more time at the moment. So Karyakin is. Oh, is the knight trapped? Wait, what? G3. If you take the knight, queen takes h4 with the trick, but now the knight is trapped. Queen f2, very nice move. The knight is trapped. White is winning a piece of Karyakin. Winning a full piece. He should be on the road as well to win a prize here. So Mama Jar of Kayakin. Ferusia, then we need to go back to board one. Board one, what's going on here? So d5, the pawn is now on e4, but white's very solid with the knights on e3 and f5. This could go either way still. But still, I really favor the bishop pair and open end games like this. Move like bishop c8 is very normal here. Time is about equal. Karyakin is still... Uh, yeah, Mama Jarf also doing very well. Let's quickly go back to that one. He's pushing them pawns. Uh, but okay, bishop x a4 should maybe give him the draw. White has got two pawns on the queen side now. If rook a2, then check and bishop c6. Should be a draw. Should be a draw. White's got too many pawns on the king side. Oh, that's a very nice move. Actually, if king takes, then rook f8, and then bishop takes b3. Should very much. Oh, that's it's king h6. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, bishop c6 should still be a draw. Yeah, because black can get back the f pawn, but uh, yeah, it should be a draw. It should be quite an easy draw actually. Although I think, yeah, if king g6, bishop e4, white wins back the h7 pawn. So, yeah, I'm pretty safe. I'm pretty sure this is a draw. Maybe bishop c2 could play for a win still, but drawing margin. Ferruccio wins! Ferruccio wins! How the hell did he do that? Oh, excuse my French there. What happened? So knight d4, solidifying. b4, trying to break through. Knight c4. b takes, b takes. Okay, okay, solidifying. Nothing much going on here. Equal material. Uh, weakness count, maybe slightly better for white, but not too much. Ah, uh, rook d3, big blunder. Rook h8. If king e7, white, black loses the bishop, but king d7 and now knight e5. And what black is actually losing. Oh, it, it's actually just an exchange. White could have played on. Black could have played on, but yeah. Okay, so Ferruja wins. Mama Jarov won as well. The pawn ending is winning. Then only Karyakin is the last game. So Ferruja winning the tournament together with Mama Jarov. And then together with Karyakin. If Karyakin wins this game or if Crescent Moon wins. We've got three winners, everybody. We've got three winners. Karyakin wins the tournament. Together with Ferruja, together with Mama Jarov. You'll see the medals coming out soon. Let's see who's got the best tie break of them all. It seems to be Karyakin. And in fourth place, okay, Sichev, anyway, it seems to be. Yeah, he's got the best tie break of them all. So Sichev going fourth place, winning $100. So yeah, there are still some games going on, not too much. This has looked like an interesting material imbalance. Not anymore, because this is made in two. Oops. And then, of course, moving on to another game. Uh, oh. 
This is a draw. I want to grab the rook, but then the queen, the pawn promotes, so it's a draw. Chess D, J, W. All right, only one. Uh, yeah, okay, but this is over. All right. Everybody, with that, we got to an end of Title Tuesday. That was once again a very exciting round. And it is true that nine points can get you a prize because it's actually not Seachef who won the fourth prize. It's actually Tiger Schleip, which is Gata Kamski. Gata Kamski winning $100 with the fourth place and Sergei Karyakin winning on tie breaks this tournament together with Ferruja on second place on tie breaks and Mama Jar of the top players coming again in this tournament. Wow, we that was a, what a game, but it was so unfortunate that Sichev lost that game against Ferruja because he was doing all right. The game was more or less equal, equal in balance. Equal but imbalanced, but he was doing all right. But in the end, tactics is all that matters. And Ferruja got into shape. So Ferruja actually, I think he got something like eight and a half out of nine in the last uh, eight and a half. He, he really made a dash for it in the past round. So Mamajarov also doing very well, of course. But Sichev, uh, definitely a player to watch in the future because he performed amazingly beating all sorts of players and doing very well in this game as well but uh, in the end the top players are the ones that uh, yeah that clutched it out so yeah title tuesday is over everybody hope you guys enjoyed um i'm going to start with my ending ceremony then so yeah, no uh, no national anthems or anything, but uh, just me saying goodbye to everyone. Of course, so stick around because uh, Title Tuesday might be over, but we are of course also moving on to a streamer, which you guys can check out. So more chess, if you didn't have enough just yet. Uh, always fun to watch streamers actually. And also, actually, let me remind everyone what is uh, what was at stake here? So the first prize was actually $750. Second prize, $400. Third place, $150. Fourth place, $100. And best female, $100. And best streamer gets $100 as well. Best streamer, if you are not already in the prizes, if I'm not mistaken. All right. So... Let me check if I can find out the best female player. Um, not in the top 30, so that will be determined later. And the best streamer will also be determined later by the chess.com chess officials, obviously. All right, so we are moving on with this to Daniel Naroditsky. And I'm going to switch to my... Ending stream, ending screen once again. I hope you enjoyed the stream, everybody. This was once again a very exciting title Tuesday. And also drop me a like if you like to see more uh, chess content. Then my name is Willem Prijsers from the Netherlands, and you can follow me on Monkey Chess. And otherwise, of course, follow this channel, the Chess Channel on Twitch. Of course, there will be much more events coming up, that, which you will see in the slideshow that I'm going to show you in just a bit rest me to say have a good evening afternoon morning whatever time it is for you i'm going to yeah stretch my legs i guess drink some more tea or something maybe grab some food and enjoy the excitement that just passed today so once again signing off roland Prusers from forchest.com and maybe see you next week yeah goodbye everyone